In this problem, we are given these two equations that we are going to be using later. And we also need to find a lot of things right here, A through F. First thing that we're going to do is find the average power absorbed and delivered by the load. We are given a couple of things here. We are given a load consisting of a 480 ohm resistor that is in parallel with a 5 over 9 microfarad capacitor. And this is connected across the terminals of a sinusoidal voltage, VG, and set equal to 240 cosine of our omega times t with an angle of zero degrees. So to draw this out, we know that we have our resistor, and we also know that we have our capacitor. I'm not really focusing on the direction of the capacitor right now, but this is roughly what it will look like, and it's happening over these two terminals. Now for the terminals, we know that we have our plus minus V of G right here. We know that we have our 480 ohms, and then we know that our capacitor is the microfarads. However, we need to convert that into impedance. So the formula for impedance is that we are going to have an ZC equal to negative J over our omega times C. Our omega is 5,000 here. So when we plug this into a calculator, we will have a negative one divided by the parentheses of 5,000 times our capacitance, which is five divided by nine times the 10 to the negative six. That way we can get rid of the micro. And if we do this, we're gonna get approximately negative 360. So our capacitance here is negative 360 times J, because we can't forget the J here. Looking in the notes, a link to below the like button. These notes contain the following formula, which is this. We're not too concerned about the P average with our current. We are concerned about the P average with our voltage. So we are going to be focusing on this part and we need to find our VRMS and square it for the power average, which is why we need the VM right here. Our sinusoidal RMS is going to be equal to the VM over the square root of two. So that's what we're going to be using here. Now plugging these in, we have our VRMS, which we need to find again. This is our VRMS. So we know that our VM is going to be 240. This is the max voltage divided by the square root of two. In doing this, we are gonna get approximately 169.7 for our answer. Now, from here, what we're going to need to do is square this and then divide it over our resistor. So now we're plugging this in up here. We have the 169.7 squared for our VRMS divided by the resistance. And we know the resistance here is 480 ohms. Remember, this is a resistance, not impedance, which is why we're not combining it with the capacitor. And if we divide this for our answer, we are going to get 60 watts for our power average. That's going to be the equation for this part. For the second part, we have this equation right here. That's also in the notes, link below the like button. And we need to plug things in. We know our Vmax. We know our angle for the voltage. That's zero. However, we don't know anything about the current. So what we can do is find our current. We need the angle and we also need the maximum value for this. When we look at this, we know that we have some current going across this impedance and some current going across this impedance. And the total at this node is going to be equal to the source impedance, which is basically the I max, which is what we want to find. So we need to find the voltage that's being split between these impedances, add them together, and that will give us our I max. Well, to do this, we know that a voltage in parallel, which is what this is, is the same throughout each lane. So that we're gonna have the same voltage here and the same voltage here that we have for this part. And again, that's because they're all in parallel. So when we solve for this, we're gonna say that our I of M is equal to our V of G, which we know to be 240 divided by our impedance. And we'll start with the resistor, that's 480. We will have a plus, and then we are going to have our voltage again, which is 240 divided by our impedance, which is a negative J times 360. And we will get this for our equation. Our J is now positive. When we flip it from bottom to top or from top to bottom, it changes the sign. And so that's how we have it. We found our I max and now we need to convert this into the polar form. So this is going to be equivalent to these values here. This is the polar equivalent for that. And if you don't know how to do the rectangular to polar conversion, the conversion is that for our maximum value, so in this case our I max, it's gonna be the same for V max but it's gonna be equal to our real number, which is 0.5 squared, plus our imaginary number, which is 0.6 repeating squared, all under the square, same square root. And then we will have our angle equal to the tangent negative one of our imaginary number divided by our real number. And this will be the formulas on how to convert it. Now we can plug it back into our actual equation. 
So for this, we have our VMAX. We know that's 240. We know our IMAX is 0 0.83 repeating. So we're just going to write this up here. It's being divided by 2. And then we're going to multiply this by the sine of our angle for the voltage, 0, minus the angle for our current, which is 53. Now we can plug all this into a calculator. And from this, we are going to get that our Q is equal to approximately negative 80 VARs. Now we are asked, what is the peak value of the instantaneous power delivered by the source? Remember, if something is delivered, it's a negative. If something is being absorbed, it's a positive, and that's given to us right here. So that means this answer will have a negative in it. It has to be a negative, even if it's a positive, because again, it is being delivered. Now we want to find our P max, the max power. And to do this, there is a formula for it in the notes. And it's also given to us right here. We have this right here. So we can just rewrite this out down here. We're going to have that our P max, we'll just write this as PM, is equal to the P average. We found our P average to be 60. So we're just going to plug this in. We will have a plus the square root of our P. And we need to now find our P because we know the P average and we're trying to find the P max, but we don't know the P. To find our P, we can again look in the notes and we will be able to find this equation that we are going to use. I'll just put it over here. And this equation says that our P is equal to the Vmax times our Imax divided by two and then the cosine of our angles. So what we're plugging into here is 240 times our Imax, which we've just found to be the 0 0.83. And again, this is repeating. And this is all being divided by two. And then we're gonna have the cosine of the angle of our voltage, which is zero minus the angle of our current, which is 53 degrees. And if we do this, we are going to get approximately 60. So kind of the same as our uh, power average, but this will be a 60 in here. It's going to be squared. We have a plus our Q. Our Q is the same as it was earlier. So we're going to have a negative 80 degrees. So we're going to have a negative 80. And this is going to be our equation. I'll just tie this to here, future reference. And now we can plug this into a calculator. And this will give us the value of 160. Remember, again, it is negative because in the instructions, it says it's being delivered. Now for part D, it says it's being absorbed. That means whatever we get, we are going to need it to be a positive. So we're basically finding the absolute value of this. The figure shows the results of the derivation for P min. We're finding P min. And P min, if we look up here, is basically the same exact thing for our P max. Everything is the same. However, there is the slight difference that instead of actually adding the um, square root to our P average, we are going to be subtracting. So we will have a 60 minus the square root of all of this. And we can then plug this into a calculator. And from here, we're going to get a negative 40, but again, it is absorbed. So it has to be a 40. That means the answer for part D is 40 watts. Now we're asked, what is the power factor of our load? This, again, can be found in the notes linked below at the end of section 10.2. That equation is going to look something a little bit like this. We have our power factor, and we're going to have the cosine of the angle for our voltage, which is zero, minus the cosine over the angle for our current, which is 53 degrees. This is going to give us an angle of approximately 0 0.6. That is the power factor. Next, we are asked, what is the reactive factor of our load? This can be found in the same section in the notes, and it's going to look like this. So it's basically the same thing as our cosine. However, now we have a sine out front. So we have the sine 0 minus 53 degrees, and this will give us an approximate value of negative 0 0.8. And that is how you would go about solving for this problem. More network analysis problems are in the playlist below, as well as notes that cover this entire coursework in the description below the like button.